Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am recording this on Sunday, um, the 4th of October. I'm scheduled to go out on the Tuesday, um, the 6th. Um, yeah, the truth of the matter is I've decided um, over the weekend to get a couple of videos out early that I can just put out a little bit later in the week because I've got about two or three days where I have to wait in for a few deliveries, um, a few things arriving and via courier. Um, so I can't really go out in the early part of the day into the great outdoors um, and um, unfortunately um, I'm kind of restricted to my local area while I do that. The days are getting shorter at the moment and um, the evenings are drawing in much earlier, much quicker at the moment and we've got barely what, three and a half, four weeks to go until the clocks go back which means that the evenings will start drawing in very, very early indeed. So, but the good news is of course is that uh, uh, the last of my winter wear is arriving during these um, three days of the couriers I'm um, turning up, which means that I'll, I'll have the raincoat um, for myself to stand out in the rain. I'll have the umbrella, which of course I will be able to place on the tripod for the camera if I need to stand out in the rain, a distance away, zoomed out with the lav mic, etc. Um, that'd be good, um, which means that I will be able to be all weather, all terrain, Wind might be a bit of a problem, but it doesn't matter whether it's wet or cold or any of these things. Um, I will be winterproofed and I'll be able to bring the grey outdoors to you. Whatever the weather, <laughs> whatever the temperature, whatever the hell is going on, you know, that's the thing. So that's some uh, good news anyway. But of course, uh, what I wish to talk about today. Now there is a sound that is quite familiar to the British audience and it goes like this. Yes, that very 80s Simmons sound of electronic drums precedes the closing titles of EastEnders, a very fucking depressing soap opera, if ever there was one, full of all these people. I didn't do it, it was that then, who done it? Oh, get out of my pub. Right, and everyone is basically having affairs with everyone behind everyone's back and everyone is lying about everything and everything is duplicitous and expedient and uh, the sort of normal social engineering that soap operas like to program into people in order to keep everyone divided and stupid, which is the way that the, uh, the powers that be, or as I like to call them, the powers that soon to be were, if we're lucky, um, like to keep us. However, one of the things I do like to do is to imagine that um, imagine the, the soap opera characters uh, star the elites of the world. So in, um, in the case of America, it could be like there's a soap opera with Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi, um, all of these people. Maybe we can throw a few of the billionaires in there like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates. Um, yeah, and then of course over here, We've got uh, the, the soap opera characters of the day just happened to be, uh, was it? Mr. Boring, Keir Starmer, um, the leader of the opposition, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, Prime Miniature, I think you should call him. Um, then who else we've got? We've got Matt Hancock, Twat Hancock Womble, um, the, uh, what is it, Minister for Sickness, um, or, you know, which, uh, well, they call him Minister for Health, but I think I only call him the Minister for Sickness from now on. We've got the two, um, what do you call it, dunces, the two people who come out the university cap with the dunces hats on, um, Chris Half Witty and um, Patrick Valance, or Patrick Unbalanced, as I like to call him. Um, now, look, I'm looking at all these people, I'm looking at all these elites at the moment, and I'm thinking to myself, well, look, they've done all the predictive programming that they could do over the last few um, years with dramas, post-apocalyptic dramas, you know, of plagues coming along um, to wipe us all out. But the plague isn't quite as deadly as they made it out to be. But all the predictive programming to get us to uh, we'll use hand sanitizer and wear masks and all the usual stuff. Um, but except that, you know, six months on and more people are dying of colds and flu. But the predictive programming, the social engineering is all there. Um, so, you know, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, the elites are like that. They are so full of themselves. They're so full of hubris. I, I just wonder what the hell is going on. Because I just think in order to take their power away from them, in order so that I don't see them that way, in order so that you don't see them that way, 
We might as well throw in, what's his name, Winnie the Pooh in China, Tedros from the World Ill Health Disorganization, and all of the others, whoever's ahead of the CDC. Oh, yeah, throw the NHS in there as well. I know they're a religion in the UK, and it's blasphemy to say, throw the NHS, but just think of them. And I'm gonna call this uh, soap opera Covenders, right? Now, I don't know if YouTube's algorithm will pick up on that or not. We hope not, right? But, because uh, I thought this, this video would be considered to be naughty. It will probably be demonetized anyway, but what the fuck? With my sort of low level of viewership and low level of, uh, of was it subscribers, it doesn't matter anyway whether I lose, what, 10p, you know? That's what it's like, so fuck it, I say. It is a soap opera, and we've got to think of it that way, right? Now, I wonder what the hell's going on, because as I remind you many a time, and I keep on going on about this, and lots of people go on about this very recently, when those two half-wits, um, Chris Half-Witty and, you know, Patrick Unbalanced, decided to go to the government, um, uh, or no, get, stand in front of a press, the press, the press, who in this country are sensationalistic, who are more interested in selling papers and they're more interested in drama and um, excitement and you know what you call it I don't know um, hyperbole all of that stuff they're not actually interested in the facts they never are interested in facts because facts don't come into it for them and with these two um, you know pseudo scientists I'm not going to call them scientists I mean dunces you know academic science dunces stand in front of the newspapers um, you've got to be careful what you say in front of the newspapers you've got to make sure you don't give them anything for them to sensationalize so what they do they go and say right there's this graph that's going like this and what we've done is we've just gone and added that to it now you have to be a dunce or you have to be really stupid, or you have to assume that the great British public have half the IQ that you think they do, which I think is probably closer to the truth, to think that people are gonna be that stupid as to get a graph that goes a little bit like this, and then a little bit like that, and a little bit like that, and a little bit like that, and like that. To think, to mistake that for that, <laughs> you know? and say that by the time we get to this point, there'll be millions and billions and trillions and quadrillions of people. Uh, like there's nowhere near that many people on the way anyway, but you know, um, you don't have to be good at maths anyway. I'm gonna all get the lurgy and we're all gonna die. Well, we're all gonna die anyway, so what the fuck, right? Just hopefully not yet, eh? And then, um, I'm now thinking, well, we've got the presidential campaign coming up now. And you notice that, uh, I don't know, first Boris gets it very early on. And now, now Donald Trump's supposed to have it. And um, I don't know, I'm looking at this and thinking, I don't know how much of this is real. I really don't know how much of this is real anymore. I don't even know to take this seriously anymore. I don't even know whether, of course, this is some fiction. Because it does look like that. Why ain't my Facebook friends numbers dropping like flies at this point. I mean, fucking should be, according to how the statistics were six months ago. I should have had it myself by now, right? But no. I'm looking at this and thinking, this just got to treat this like it's some bad drama or a B-movie or a soap opera. And it's all there to get inside your mind, to preoccupy your mind with all of this stuff. So this is what I'm saying. Fuck the American election. Fuck all the press releases. Fuck what the CDC, the you know the the health advisors to governments are saying. Fuck the World Ill Health Disorganization. Fuck the lot of it. And every time you see it, just imagine these drums. That's basically my attitude towards all of this right now. Right. Now that aside, I'm optimistic. I know that um, people are talking about what the implications of how we're being socially engineered, the fact that we've all been made to be distant from each other, so there's less hugging, there's less shaking of hands, there's less actual physical interaction, there's less of all of these things, there's more kind of social inhibition as we've been made to um, distance ourselves from each other. What are the long-term implications of this? How is it gonna affect the future? And um, what's his name? Um, 
Mr. Legalized Freedom, um, I saw his video recently where he was talking about this. Um, and uh, yeah, he makes some really good points, I would say. Look up Legalized Freedom uh, and uh, check out the latest video, Greg Moffat. Remembered his name. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm a bit like that sometimes, scatterbrain, you know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he spoke about all of this stuff and a very, very de deep analysis as to what could be the long term effects of the social engineering of this virus on us as we go through time. And I would say go, go look at his video, um, which um, I'm releasing this on Tuesday, by which time I think his video will have been out for two or three days. So go check that out, right? Anyway. What I will say, though, is I am of the opinion that this will not be the first or only black swan event in history throughout the whole of human history that has caused human beings to irreversibly change their behaviour. Um, this is something that is ongoing. It doesn't necessarily mean that all of the changes are going to be the way the elites want them to be, and it doesn't mean that all the changes are going to be negative. What we have to remind ourselves is that the irreversible changes that the Spanish flu brought about in, um, you know, after the end of the Second World War meant that people didn't go around indiscriminately spitting everywhere, you know, and snotting everywhere um, in Europe like they did just about five or ten years before. And, you know, like you'd go to third world countries even to this day and you'd still see it in places, right? Um, out in Asia, places like that, but you won't see that um, in Europe. And you won't have seen that in Europe for about 100 years. But before the Spanish flu, it would have been a much more commonplace sight. So, to some degree or other, I think that um, there could be some positive change that could come out of this. Also, if it is that um, some of the changes that are being brought about or engineered into existence now are too much for the human spirit, I believe that there is something in the human spirit that contains a level of resilience and anti-fragility to mean that we will reject some of these changes and some of the changes that we'll get as a response to this lurgy era that we find ourselves in will be counterintuitive to what the elites would like to program into us. I am of the opinion that if you can devise in your own mind and in your own heart a positive narrative counter to all the narratives that you are seeing now, right, and you can create one yourself and you can create a good one and a positive one you can fight the programming that is being brought in all that is being brought in um, to change us the way they want us to be and change yourself into something that you want to be because this is what I have been doing myself right I've been thinking about this man you know the last um the last uh, six months well I've been boosting my immune system this is the thing, rather than thinking about, oh, I must stay away from people, I must wear a mask, I must not shake people's hands, I must be a germ freak. No, I've not been thinking like that. I've been thinking to myself, well, I must supplement myself with things that are gonna boost my immune system, and as soon as I'm overweight, I must lose weight. I've lost 10 kilos since the middle of August, right? So, these are the things that I have been doing in order to make my immune system stronger. And I'm thinking, well, no, I, I don't really want to go and fucking succumb to the way this world is becoming at the moment. I wish to, um, to bring back old normal, but as I say, my own version, my own upgraded version of old normal. That's what I want. I don't want the new normal. And um, when people do find themselves going into that new normal, well, I understand, right, that social engineering does work on some people. But rather than freak out about, oh, well, the social engineers are coming after us. No, you just change your own narrative. You think to yourself, well, I'm gonna resist this as much as I possibly can. I might be in the minority of people resisting this and they might attempt to change the world around me, but they ain't fucking changing me the way I want them to. I'm changing me, counter to the way they wish to change me, right? That's what you gotta think. There is always going to be social engineering from the elites coming by, coming through, coming down the pipe. But there is also going to be, in some cases, right, there is also going to be counter social engineering. There is also going to be backlashes. And you've got to bear in mind that the hubris-filled, overconfident elites cannot see 
all ends. They cannot engineer everything the way they want them to be. And a lot of what they want, well, the opposite will happen. Because people are more anti-fragile, more resilient, and smarter, and less stupid than the elites would like to think otherwise. And this is what I'm giving out to other people. And this is what I'm telling everyone who comes to my YouTube channel. And I'm saying that you go and you spread your version of that message too. You've got to remind people that we don't really want the social media or the internet or people like me on the internet or whatever to go out telling you how bad the future is, telling you how wrong everything is, telling you how sinister and malevolent the elites are, telling you how you're being programmed, how you're being brainwashed. No, what we need are more people coming out and saying, ah, but you don't have to believe that this applies to you. You can come up with your own alternative narrative to this. And if enough people do it, and it gains critical mass, then it cancels out all of these narratives. What's the point of spreading FUD? FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. What's the point of spreading that? When we could be spreading hope. And if enough people go out there and spread hope and optimism, right? Then of course, enough people are making that real as well. So, disregard all of these fucking soap opera characters, these dunces who are masquerading as dignitaries and leaders and academics and experts and pundits. Disregard them all. Stop inflating them, you know, and raising them so high in your perception of reality. Fuck them all off. You know, who the hell are they? They're no one any more than they're, you know, they're no bigger than you or me. They just have more expensive toys and they just have more social capital because they're more famous than us. But that aside, you know, they still piss, they still shit. They're still, <laughs> they're still just as susceptible to dying if they're in a situation to do as we are, right? You know, they're just as vulnerable as us. And this is the thing you gotta bear in mind. Who are they? Don't let the power of illusion make you think that they're any more powerful or omnipotent or omniscient or omnipresent or godlike than any of the rest of us are because they're not, right? And this is the thing. So, your own narrative is what's most important, right? And, um, you know, I'm not expecting this video to be monetized. In fact, I'm not even gonna monetize it. I'm gonna give this one out for free. That's my um, attitude for this one um, because I'm being controversial. <laughs> you know, so, what the hell? So, I'll leave it that, eh? Um, and um, yeah, the next video I think I'm going to put out either on Thursday or on Friday, um, by which time, whatever the weather is going to throw at me, I'll have all the right gear so I will be able to go out to the great outdoors and go far away from the house, um, out somewhere, you know, into the elements. Well, it depends on what the weather's going to throw at us, I suppose. So, I shall leave it at that for now. I could do with three days away from uh, doing this and I can focus on taking it easy and then going for walks without having to worry about filming or post-production. I need a bit of time in that occasionally, you know. But I need to also pace it so that I look like I'm constantly here too. Right, so, see you later alligator. See you soon baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also check out our new merchandise stores where you can find t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. Links in the show notes below, as well as the links to all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, etc. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.